14th of January will be out and that's something that the street's going to watch. <laughs> all right, Ekta, thanks a lot for reminding all of us that there is something known as Valentine's Day because I think uh, incrementally, you know, people are moving away from these concepts as uh, sure. perhaps they mature or evolve. Uh, let's see how that comes as by. As long as the markets are open these yeah. days. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, uh, so, uh, you know, uh, we were alluding to the mutual fund data. The mutual fund data for the month of January is out. Net equity inflow is about 12,500 crore odd rupees. Large funds have seen inflows after two months of outflows. We are now joined by Sunil Subramaniam, who is uh, the Managing Director and CEO at Sundaram Mutual Fund. Uh, Sunil, thank you. Always a pleasure speaking with you on uh, days where we do have this data because your insights are invaluable. What we don't have with us right now is the SIP data. But from your conversations that you've had with people and the anecdotal evidence, what kind of... Uh, SIPs, uh, would you expect, uh, you know, taking place in the month of January? I think you should have around the 100 crore, 200 crore to the overall book size. So around the 13,000 crore mark is what it will be. Okay. All right. So around 13,000 crore mark. And that's been the case with uh, SIPs as well, right? Because uh, we have seen that number above 13,000 crore rupees at least for the last two, three months. Uh, Sunil, I wanted your sense uh, on what's happening as far as the equity flows are concerned. There has been a big increase on a month-on-month -month basis. They've come at 12,471 crore rupees versus 7,280 crore rupees. Uh, what buoyed the sentiment this time just in the equity flows? Because we have been talking about a lot of focus going on debt funds as well. Do you expect this momentum? to continue as well i think so because i think that uh, if you look at it there are three components to this uh, first is that uh, i think a lot of nfos uh, the mutual fund industry has been launching so i think these nfos have been garnering increasing collections because of the visibility the advertising campaign around these things that's number one number two is that the data for india has been robust and strong on the economic side so domestic investors continue to repose faith because they see a good future so all the uncertainty from mid-December, which has come from the FII's booking profits and then the Adani-related uh, selling by the FII's, uh, has not hurt the sentiment of the domestic investors. And I think what was being repeatedly talked about was the fact that Indian markets seem to be overvalued seemed to be overvalued. So the moment they were selling by FII's, domestic mutual funds were able to step up their purchasing because retail investors gave them money. So I think the HNI segment of the population, right, I think has looked at the correction as a good point to add more and they have given money to mutual funds to across various categories of schemes. So I think this is another reason for the buying uh, thing. The third aspect here, I would say, is that... Uh, if you look at the allocation pattern, right, I don't know the data on the breakup, but generally this is the tax season. So ELSS funds typically see an uptick. I've not been able to see the retail breakup of that, but maybe if that's also a component is added to flows this month, that could be an answer. Sunil, hi, welcome to the show. Uh, just wanted to touch upon one particular statistic, large cap fund inflow, which is at over 700 odd crores for this particular month versus mm -hmm. around 26.4 crores in the previous month, which was an outflow. Uh, mm. What would you attribute this to, that uh, there's just a general move towards safety, towards larger cap stocks? Yes, we're still interested in the equity markets, but we're more interested in keeping our money safe with large cap funds as compared to maybe uh, the mid caps, because we still don't know there are variables such as uh, you know the, the Adani group volatility, which might play, play out on a larger level. Now, I think the two things would have driven this, right? I think one is the FIS selling is in largely in large caps. Mm -hmm. So the price corrections have happened in the large cap when FIS sell. So they have sensed a good opportunity to allocate more money to large cap funds so that they can buy those stocks which the FIS are selling. That's number one. Number two is the banking pack. If you see, the one of the spin-off of the Adani sell-off was that banks sold off. And banks are a significant part of the large cap index. So I think a lot of, uh, what do you call, H&I money uh, moved into large cap because they saw that valuations have come down because of selling and it's a good time to accumulate them. I think that's the, just the kind of, I uh, would say, a slightly more smarter thinking from the uh, mm. uh, set of H&I investors in, in the country. You know, Sunil, uh, it is said that uh, it is not flows that uh, tail the market, but it's the market that tails the flows. So we have seen some underperformance for a while. Underperformance by our own past standards. Of course, uh, as uh, compared to the world, we've done extremely well. Mm. What do you think would the trend of these flows be and the nature? How much goes into debt? Uh, what happens to active? What happens to passive? My sense is that the underperformance of the index itself 
would mean that mm. a lot of money would go into active fund management because of the decline in valuations. Um, where do you see this trend? I mean, going forward? I don't think investors do so quick readjustments based on this. I think by and large, the sentiment is anchored to economic outlook for the country. I think my sense from that is that as long as the economic outlook for the country is in a good space, mutual fund uh, you know, investors put in money. Now, the reallocation between active and passive and all of that, you see, the active, rather than the underperformance of active versus passive in the past, I would say it's more the cost-sensitive investors like the Provident Funds and the h and who were tending to go into the uh, passive space. Now, I don't see that they'll suddenly change to active because active is able to beat this. And one of the reasons that this has happened is because Adani, those mutual funds didn't hold Adani in a big way. So because of which, you know, the benchmark corrected more than the active fund uh, uh, correction. So naturally, they are beating that. But I don't see investors changing this because of underperformance or otherwise, right? So I don't see that as a trend. But the second aspect here is that returns, right? Now, if you look at the post-COVID phase, right, that's the only time in the recent past that mutual fund investors pulled out money from mutual funds in a big way because they saw the economic downturn of COVID coming. But within a period of, let's say, what, seven, eight months, right, they started coming back in to the market because the V-shaped recovery came in and because they realized that FIS were buying in the markets were rallying. So I think when they have a good economic view of the country in terms of its growth, right, they tend to commit the capital to, to the equities markets. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it happens that when a long period of underperformance and let's say a three-year SIP has sure. turned negative, that's when they tend to maybe look at it and say, should I reallocate? Your question on equity versus debt, right? And I think that that period of people, that the portion of people who switch actively in equity and debt has come down dramatically because they are the hybrid funds now, which tend to get those allocations because the fund managers take the call between debt and equity in a dynamic asset allocation fund. Okay, all right, Sunil, always a pleasure. Thank you very much for joining in with your views. So that is the mutual fund data for the month of January net equity inflow has risen to over 12,500 odd crores versus 7,200 odd crores in the previous month. We need to take a short break, but as we take a break, we'd like to thank our viewers once again. We have beaten all competition on the budget day with a whopping 88.2% viewership during the finance minister's